And then once the earth has fled from him, this is what is good. And I saw the dead, all in all. And I saw the dead, small and great. So including the leading high priest of Africa. Yeah. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God. And the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Listen to this part. Lunaba Shanyang, your city under the sea. You think you are Ariel and Nemo. Hey, you've got some funny little marine kingdom under the ground that you go to where you can breathe underwater despite not being a shark. That's what's good. Mm. This is what the, the, the Bible has to say about you who at the time of destroying that little kingdom, you are going to be there. So therefore you will probably drown, right? And just kind of stay at the freaking Bermuda Triangle or whatever. This is what the Bible has to say about you. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and Hades delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Now listen. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Leah de Hilling. It's that basic. Mara, the way it needs Kenya. Yes, like it like I told you would imagine the Aguna Mundos on tint nishanya hure. Even though they are dealing. But my thing with that is I understand you're self-preserving just as any human being is, but for the wrong freaking kingdom. You get Ugulwa. This is a spiritual war, do you understand? Nobody enters into a cockpit yellow. Nobody enters into a wrestling boxing ring. And just stands there. So you're targeting of my person. I get it. I get that you got to try and save yourselves. I mean, you would not be a warrior if you didn't. I understand that you're trying to essentially neutralize prophecy by staying reprobate. You get to fight. You're fighting for the wrong kingdom. That's what's good. Mara, you are fighting. So I understand. And it is precisely because I understand that death spells that I stay alive. I need to go and peer at the from outside and just take this conversation from there. Yeah, what's up? I'm outside now. And as usual, we tuck the power bank in the cushy place. Alrighty. Um, where was I? Okay. So when it comes to uh battle war whatever like ndwa, ndwa. if somebody says to you after school it's after school if somebody comes at you like a ton of uneasy bricks and is like get the whole gura or five two even though how about it's written in god's word that blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the sons of god even though you don't want to fight just like Israel, barely ever do they poke and prod away at a place Baba Bula trying to fight them. No, Israel never starts a war. Literally, they never start a war. They just repair, they respond to attack. They are always on the defensive, never on the offensive. They are always just defending themselves. They are trying to foster peace. Before this rubbish unfolded, they were trying to get into some deal with Saudi Arabia that has been put somewhat on a halt because of the crazy of Hamas, uh, of, of, of the Iranian-backed proxies all across the Middle East that are being neutralized and obliterated right now. They are always um, at war with America's indiscretion, like proper never mind america but all the european countries emmanuel macron with his crazy belief that israel should be split into two a two-state solution all that yeah they're always just having their land uh, threatened with all manner and kinds of beleaguerments on their persons so they have to respond they're always just responding to afflictions on their person they're always just responding to threats on their sovereignty. They're always responding to threats on the integrity of their country. They are responding to threats of trying to insist that Tel Aviv is the capital of Israel instead of Jerusalem. There's just, like I said, Badulaba responder. So when some bully goes along, when some bully in school comes to you, break, while the teachers are still looking, and it's like, after school is after school. I mean, really and truly, on that day, when some little freak of a psychopath decides 
Uzoktateli lunch. When some little freak of a psychopath makes a decision that Utoku just a jerez lidi at the house in cha, your new sneakers that your mom just bought you. Yeah. You could just let it go, right? You could. But if you're any kind of self respecting and if you're any kind of dignified, you are going to basically train your fingers for battle, train your legs for war. To fight the fight you don't want to fight. Because if you don't, Bazok Jonjela Ilanch. If you do not fight, they're just going to take away what belongs to you rightfully. Like, I am barely sleeping. Even though I lay in bed at night, I can't go badly. And the reason why I'm not sleeping is because I am bombarded by the demonic attack. It has ramped up. It has ramped up and has blown into the sky like a freaking mushroom cloud. And so therefore, my sleep is wrestled. It is tumultuous. As a result, I've got dark circles. If I don't apply makeup on my face with the cap cap with the cap cut makeup filters, you can low-key see how puffy I am. But these days, even through the makeup, you can see. I almost tripped over there. You can see that I'm puffy-eyed because I'm not getting proper rest. Even though I'm laying my body down and even though I'm closing my eyes and even though I'm dreaming, I am so wrestled in the spirit that it's like that's when I sleep actually rather in the morning because I have to stay awake all night praying. I am fighting a spiritual war. Do you understand what I'm saying? Such that I can see must be link, that I'm not okay. I can see when I'm, I can feel right now that I'm basically sleepwalking. I am basically sleepwalking right now. And the reason why that is the case is because I am being wrestled in the spirit. Why? Because bullies have tapped me on the shoulder at lunch and said to me, after school is after school. You have come for the wrong child on the school playground. I am Chris man. I might be tiny. I've been Punyuga ring for a decade. Go fail. I will not stop Punyuga manje. And now that I've got this many enemies encircling me, more so am I going to be given power. I will elude every last one of you. Not only am I going to succeed, but I'm also going to succeed too. Shoot. Do you understand? Every last bullet coming out of my one gun is going to hit a target precis with precision. Indeed, that's exactly what I am. I'm like a precision guided missile. That's what I am. In the sense that I hit my exact target. I don't miss because I don't have enough artillery. I don't have fire to just part ways with. I don't have enough weapons to just keep on, you know, expanding. And so for those reasons, whatever bullet comes out of my mouth, it has got to hit a target with precision. And that is exactly what I am going to do. All the way up until there's enough peace for me to at least break bread, sleep a full cycle, without ugu, without khutubayela, without panic, without waking up, uh, uh, sorrowful without just a depth of an existing spiritual wall that I can taste touch and feel and I can taste the blood in my mouth like that whole phenomenon that's going on with me spiritually until such time that it has abated I will continue to rock up and do these videos until I have shot dead enough people to have some kind of reprieve until I have knocked out enough people, I will throw missiles into your backyards every single day. Do you understand? Without fail. Every single day. Be it through my many part series of content that I've already done or these videos. Every day, there's going to be a precision guided missile. Every day. And every day, somebody is going to be dropped like a domino. Do you understand? Because you don't just get to say, tap on the shoulders of some kid Eskolweni that gets trained jujitsu at home every day and kung fu at home every day. This child is like a hard knock black belt in all kinds of martial arts. And small in comparison to their peers. Yet, prolific warrior. That's what I am. Encircling me, 
bullying the living daylights out of me trying to take away my lunch it's my lunch and I'm gonna eat it and if you got a bone to pick with the fact that I want to keep my apple I'm going to shoot you dead until you leave my damn apple alone is that basic if at all somebody says to you after school is after school you could just let them bajo hand like any washing and there's only so much running you can do a person that says to you after school is after school one after school you can ask your parents to come and pick you up so early that the next after school and then for the next two weeks worth of after schools you can be escorted by a teacher all the way home because you live not far from school but at some point you gotta stand up against these freaks do you understand at some point you gotta neutralize the threat to the existing one at, uh, around your life and that's how it has been with israel this entire time after school is after school iranian backed proxies now iran is themselves shooting israel that's how desperate they are uh, but initially uh, iran was ransacking Israel through its proxies, Hezbollah, um, the, the Iranian-backed um, Houthi rebels um, in Yemen. They, they have been so far ransacking Israel through proxies. But now Iran is so desperate that they're out here throwing hails of missiles, despite the Iron Dome over Israel for the second time. Like, <laughs> about, about a month or two months ago, we remember that hail of, of missiles over Israel that were intercepted by the Iron Dome and then just a couple of days ago yet again about a week actually to the day I think it's a week to the day yet another hail of bullets that that, that and it's 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 unprecedented that the, those that, that, that many missiles being thrown by any country is unprecedented in the history of war in the world at all in the history of war in so basically not in the Middle East or something that is just limited within a particular region or a particular time span but just period it is the most barrage of missiles on a country in the history of the world and if Israel did not have an iron dome it would be mown to the ground flat today that's how desperate Iran now is Iran who tends to stand back they, they, they were like a kingpin a boss a, uh, a mafia boss that out should be sending his skivvies to take bullets for him sending his skivvies to lay their bodies on the ground for him yeah Iran has been sending their proxies one of the proxies of which was Hamas and Hamas failed abysmally at their stupid little mission uh, October 7 they might have killed a whole bunch of Israelis but look at how they've been them based now in Gaza do you understand what I'm saying <clears throat> that's what's good and now Iran the big fat chunky bully dude is deciding to come to the party himself he's like the, the like literally the, the mafia boss the kingpin the Al Capone of the middle freaking east is now coming to the party to try and neutralize his enemy personally and you see it's beautiful when the kingpin mafia boss rocks up to personally destroy because then that gives Israel the opportunity to individually and uniquely respond in defense as usual to now neutralize Iran do you understand like however sadly because of Iran taking up uh, uh, armament for themselves to fight now russia is getting all up and crazy involved in that whole situation this is uh, basically it's leading to the end of the world what i'm trying to get at is that ezekiel 38 39 is happening recep tayyip i81 turkey we all know how he just can't stand um israel now russia is uh, evidencing you can see look how tired i am you can see it in my eyes now russia is is is, is now trying to join the party we are looking at ezekiel 38 39 or is it 37 38 basically the gog and magog war it the, the makings of it are all up in your grill and i do believe that that gog and magog war happens at the beginning of the tribulation meaning that we're not going to be here when it happens but all the uh, um all the factors that contribute to how it eventually gets there are already in play all the factors contributing to how things get to that point are already in play and with that happening y'all the body of christ and the run-up to the rapture of the body of christ are going to have a feverish battle against their souls people are going to try to snatch us from god's hand instead of uh, in, while god is of course nobody can snatch us from his hand but their attempt their attempts are going to be feverish they're going to be trying and trying and trying and trying to no avail because there is a war for the souls of men and there is a war for the prevention of 
people being reached by the message of the cross because the devil knows his time is short so he is causing this kind of persecution on Christians even in countries like South Africa precisely because Iran is personally personally out just shooting at Israel personally without using its proxies anymore like stuff has gotten to that crazy level and with things haven't reached that level of course you're gonna come for me but just like Israel the cup of staggering and just like um, any other Christian that is dealing with an, ex an increase of anti-christian sentiment and any jew dealing with an increase of anti-semitic sentiment we are not going to just stand back we do however acknowledge that we are outnumbered we will however admit that most people sorry though most people hate us we will not deny we will, we're not going to sit here and pine and mope and be like nobody loves me everybody hates me i'm gonna eat some worms big fat juicy ones creamy ones tasty ones i'm gonna eat some worms we're not going to mope we're just gonna go to war like proper even going to the point of standing for the united nations and calling them a flat out terrorist organization in their faces albeit being a member state that's exactly what israel does for the un but they are not being um, extracted from that ecosystem as member state as member state precisely because nobody has a real true good reason to unmember state israel but look at how it is that many countries in the middle east are actually trying to cause um israel to cease being a member state of the un again they already did it in the 80s and now they try to do it again recently even though they are freaking terrorists and the only reason they're as emboldened as they are to achieve that is because the world is supporting them in their terror the world is supporting terrorist organizations against a country that only ever responds in defense against its enemies. People be tapping on their shoulders, ga ga ga, Israel. After school is after school and I'm, I'm gonna take your lunch. And they expect Israel to just stand there and just take some punches. And they also expect Israel to keep on insisting on an escort every day to go home. An escort like the United Nations. An escort like the United States of America an escort like nato they keep on expecting basic like you can't have your teacher constantly walk you home because teacher has got their own life to live their own children to rescue their own uh, assignments to mark so israel stood back and did not retaliate enough to understand but then when you burst into the kibbutz and you put some babies on some ovens i sorry on that day it's a war on that day, it's war. The, um, the whole uh, thing with... I didn't realize that our solar panels were so small in comparison to everybody else's. But anyway, whatever. On that day... Um, like Papa, when you, when you break into the kibbutz as Hamas and you, you mutilate bodies and you rape women and you, you, you massacre, when, when you terrorize, when you wreak that kind of carnage, havoc to a point where still to this day they are inhabited, so to this day it has not been re rebuilt it's just such a, a sight for sore eyes uh, on that day <laughs> just sitting back and continuing to hope america to hold your hand for america to hold your hand or the united nations to hold your hand and say i'm sorry they did this to you but please don't retaliate you're naive how long am i going to be walking with a chaperone how long am i going to be walking with a handholder how long is Karabo going to continue to try and evangelize you, reach you for Christ, that you might not continue to try to kill me already? How long am I going to uh, attempt a diplomatic solution to this affair? How long am I going to try and foster peace in my particular Middle Eastern circumstance? How long am I going to try and negotiate for better relations, uh, social, politically, with you crazy terrorists? that are actually even trying to build a nuclear weapon so you can lay me to the ground. How freaking long must I continue to see if I can't talk to Ayatollah Khamenei? How long must I continue to see if I can't perhaps maybe negotiate a settlement with Raisi? How long must I continue to take Nasrallah in my freaking stride when he keeps on dropping nukes into my backyard? And this time around, he's so brave, this Khamenei, that he is in and of himself shooting where before he would use proxies before he was using proxies and now he's actually just kind of shooting personally i mean really this is war so when netanyahu is actually declaring war 
on the rest of whoever is coming up against them. They're considered arrogant and pompous despite being so tiny as a country. I mean, can you bully one little tiny sliver of a, a, li a light, a small little slice of bread, a worth of a country in the Middle East? Can you really bully them as a global concert and with them prosper so much to overwhelm you all and still not believe in their God? You are on this day, of course, handed totally over. But the ramp up of persecution against the body of Christ is, in, it is congruent to the ramp up of persecution, of course, against Israel. There is a growing global sentiment that is anti-Semitic alongside a, glo a growing global sentiment that is also anti-Christian. That is going to keep happening in increasing measure. But the Lord never e expected us to sit back and be like, huh, huh, diplomatic solution, huh, huh, how about we talk about it, huh, huh, let's see. The intention was never, ever, ever, like even in the slightest, ever, 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 not even in the slightest, for us to just sit back, recline a chair, and let people just keep on whamming us. The Lord, if anything, in Ephesians 6, said that we war not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, principalities, and spiritual wickedness in high places. He said in Ephesians 6, take up your full armor, therefore, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, cha cha cha. Breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, uh, belt of truth, shoes of peace, helmet of salvation, and with this make war. Okay, we are always at war. And when you're at war, you don't just sit. Indeed, you very potentially, because you are a man of peace, right? The Bible says that mark the righteous man. Behold the upright, for there is a future for the man of peace. So we're into peace. What I'm trying to get at is that we would much rather have a diplomatic solution, a truce, give amnesty, and see if we can't reach some kind of a middle ground. But where there is an impasse in attempting to reach that middle ground, there then will be war on our part. However, that war will nine times, nine times out of ten be defensive in the sense that we're going to be defending ourselves. We are not offending. We are not Im initiating it. We're not sparking it. We're not the one to first light the dynamite. We are just throwing it back into your camp because you threw it into ours. The re response of the body of Christ to being accosted, castigated and pilfered and pillaged in our towns is always a defensive one. Similarly to is it that way with Israel. Badulaba responda. They're always responding to threats on their sovereignty and threats on the integrity of their border. They're always responding while everybody else and now it appears the world at large and never mind just hostile Islamic countries. Everybody else is of the opinion that we just need to sit down and be content with chaperone teachers and parents picking us up too early for the bully to get to us after school. How long are we going to run? And we are at the place now where we gotta be fighting. The horseman of the apocalypse that is on the black horse, uh, no, not black, red. The red horse is, is a horse of war, right? That war is going to break out precisely because of this insistence that we just sit and do nothing. And then we retaliate. And so it's going to re result in a counter retaliation. And so people are just going to be throwing stones all over the show. Men are going to kill each other. Countries are going to go to war with one another. And then this rando called the Antichrist is going to rise up and foster peace, especially in the Middle East. So stuff like that gotta happen in order to do what fulfill bible prophecy the mobile line the book of revelation 6 matthew 24 daniel 7 i could go on daniel 12 go and read god's word to understand that this here ndwa anticipated much that's what's good i saw it coming because i'm in the scriptures this here is not catching me unawares like some bat out of hell and so because it's not catching me unawares i don't expect that i'm not going to have dark circles under my eyes i don't expect that i'm not going to be puffy eyed I don't expect that I'm gonna have rest easy like I'm sleeping beauty. I don't anticipate that I'm going to be whisked out of here like it's a freaking fairy tale romance and I'm Cinderella. I am not expecting anybody to come through for me because ain't nobody coming for Israel. I am not expecting anyone but for me fighting in my unique capacity in the name of the Lord. That's what y'all need to understand. How na monotrofika mona mete Cinderella wanna be like stupid attempt to save me he has never understood a single day of spiritual war in his life and yet is such a prolific warrior from above so but that finds me attractive and considered my and considers listen to this my ministry sexy sexy like if a man is going to find christian ministry sexy what the heck he needs to get out he needs to get out 
I am dealing with men. I keep getting that word told me time and time again that they think of me as sexy. How in the world do you find a person who's so good as sexy? Oh, damn, oh, dom, how na honey, how hono bonasente. You are myopic. You, you lack foresight. Do you understand? And with that uh, lack of foresight, of course, you're going to think that you can go and grab a civilian, a soldier from the battlefield, and make her your wife. Make her sit up in your house, barefoot and pregnant, out your popping babies, slap bang in the center of a war. Like proper shellings are dropping in the backyard boo and you are out trying to put a baby in her stomach that is what is going on inappropriate reaction by civilians to soldiers in a battlefield i just so happen however to be a female soldier that is somewhat attractive and so soldiers are inappropriately responding to the dire circumstance at hand we are looking at a situation here that is literally a full-out blown out war and yet people are still trying to have sex like soldiers are just be gawking at the centerfold posters of prostitutes of, of, of like playboy bunnies because I don't to concentrate on the there is a war at hand like I'm busy falling apart even my balance is being compromised right now because of the fact that I am so unrested I am so so unrested that my body is like leaning towards one particular side like I told you I'm sleepwalking but if you are going to declare war on me I'm going to respond appropriately I am going to declare war back I am going to fight I'm going to defend myself I don't expect anybody that insists of, of, of Georgia, anybody that is like, I'm going to take your land, or Israel is going to cease to exist, or it's going to be blown off the map, or there will not be a single Jew left on earth. Well, in this particular instance, there will not be a single Christian left on earth. Do not think that we being the people of God are going to take that line down without a fight. And in the run-up to the rapture, we are going to fight winning battles. There is only one time. There is only one time in the history of the entire human race, do you understand what I'm saying? Where Satan has been given authority to make war with the saints and to overcome them. It's called the tribulation. We haven't arrived there. Before then, we trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm us. Before the tribulation, every battle, every war we enter, we win. However, once the tribulation commences, God allows the devil to overwhelm us so that he can rock up as a lion with a sickle to judge the whole entire world with his second coming. So Christ himself takes up our, 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 our armament, our battle at the end of the tribulation through his second coming. But in the run up to the second coming, before the rapture, he gives us proxy essentially. He gives us an ability to fight enemies. He gives Christians an ability to successfully make war with the world around them. He gives us weaponry and prosperity. He sends ministering angels to us that we might conquer in spiritual war. But there's gonna come a time when ministering angels are not sent so much to rescue us, but to finish the world off. And this world is gonna finish themselves off by persecuting the body of Christ into what they call extinction. It's the great tribulation where the saints of the Most High will be worn out and the devil will make war with us and overcome us. It's not yet here. I'm tired, you can see it in my eyes. I am staggering about like a drunkard in the street right now. I am drunk, but not with strong drink, but with affliction like it's written in Isaiah, I think 51. That's where I find myself right now. But despite how drunk with affliction I am, I am still not nearly as drunk as a tribulation saint will get. Meaning that I can still conquer and I can still prosper and like dominoes I can still drop you into the ground I can still kill you because it's not yet time the tribulation has not yet commenced The restrainer has not yet been removed meaning right now like with this I'm going to trample you underfoot O serpent and O scorpion Single-handedly just like the IDF is presently single-handedly handling all of the surrounding nations around her I am going to end you if you don't repent with every message that I speak there is always a call to repentance do you understand what I'm saying? you are going to make me drunk stagger about you are going to make me struggle to walk open my eyes you are going to make me struggle to get any kind of encouragement you are going to make me highly suicidal I will not take that away from you but that's just the nature of war there will be bombs landing in the background there will be PTSD there will be lots and lots of carnage there will be lots and lots of spilled blood and there will be lots and lots of despondency but nonetheless the winning battle is mine that's going to come out of this in a hospital bed that's going to come out of this on a hospital bed in triage having been recovered from a coma but you 
are going to come out of a cold bed. You are going to come out of a casket. You are going to have a funeral attended. Do you understand? I am just going to be admitted into hospital, maybe even spend months there, perhaps even in a coma, in ICU, like unresponsive to medication for months. But I'm going to get out miraculously cured. Whereas y'all are entering into a mortuary, you are entering into a fridge, you're getting in the ground, your bodies are getting put inside a crematorium, you are going to burn to ashes, you are returning to the dust, whereas I am getting in some crutches. That's the difference. This, this here face, this exhaustion, my bloodshot eyes, my ex basically the spiritual role that I am in. Every war has casual tease. And sometimes soldiers get amputated, but they go home. Sometimes a soldier lose an eye, but they go home. Sometimes a soldiers are so traumatized that they can't live life normally again thereafter, but they go home. However, when you look back, and that's where I find myself right now. This thing is freaking traumatizing. The spiritual war is traumatizing. I feel like it's the stuff of amputation. I feel like it's the stuff of eye gouging out. I feel like it's the kind of stuff that I can never really recover from fully. But bottom line is, by the time I'm out here, getting therapy for post-traumatic stress thanks to war, my enemies will be in hell. And that's the difference. That's the difference. We have reached an impasse, we are at that place. The war is feverish, it's effervescent, it looks like that of the Middle East. It's a powder cake, it's waiting to explode. Thank God I don't have to deal with post-traumatic stress for the rest of my days because I'm going to get raptured, freaking traumatized. I'm going to get raptured imagining how can I ever recover from this I am going to get raptured sad that I never got a husband sad that I never got children sad that the wicked took away my whole future and just as I am pining saying but God why did you let this be my life however having won a war the dead in Christ will rise first and we who are alive and remain will be caught up to meet the Lord in the air and we will forever be with him I will get raptured just when I'm grumbling that you could have at least let me fight with my man. You could have at least let me fight with my children. You could have given me some kind of a semblance of a normal life. Why did you just let me be the single soldier? And then phew, I'm gone. And so every tear will be wiped from my eye. And every pain that I feel will be taken away. Romans 8 verse 18. The present sufferings are nothing in comparison to the future glory that we stand to gain. I am going to soon learn that this here was nothing in comparison to what I'm about to inherit. Last night, when I was busy dragging my body through life, trying to go and make dinner, I said to myself, you're going through a lot, this sucks, but yeah, can you imagine the reward you're gonna get for persevering through this? You see, I might not be immediately gratified with what I want. Hope deferred makes the heart sick and a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. I might not have what I ask for in prayer, but bottom line is this, this is delayed gratification. And according to the scriptures, neither eye has seen nor ear has heard, nor mind conceived the things which God has prepared for those who wait for him. Okay? That which I am going to ultimately inherit in reward for this fight that I am in, I can't even conceive it. I can't even fathom it. It is so otherworldly beyond me and transcendent that I can't even grasp it and that's why I'm floundering right now. My hope has been deferred and my heart is sick but my reward is great. When they persecute you and revile you and call you all different kinds of things on the account of the name of Jesus Christ, great is your reward in heaven. My treasure is in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and thieves don't come in and steal. It's written in God's word that if at all you get praised by man, my men here on earth, you've received your reward in full. But if you suffer in quietness, if you suffer with no reward on earth, then great is your reward in heaven. I have not received a single reward for any work that I've done in Christ. Anybody I've tried to evangelize has all rejected the gospel. My family have treated me like trash. I appear to have not gotten any answered prayer. I have left everything for the sake of the cross. I have left houses, fields, mothers, fathers, lands. I have gotten gained persecutions and no reward. My reward is great in heaven. So, this sucks, but you see, positive reinforcement through the anticipation of reward after 
a season of treachery just kind of going through the modes just going through the modes with no avenue of escape being availed me that gives me a thorough comprehension that how much more worthwhile then if I've suffered so violently at the hands of merciless men who take the kingdom of heaven from saints but the kingdom of heaven having suffered violence we take it back from them by force how much more am I going to be rewarded for trudging through the forest of lost days and discretion by men who think there is no God coming who are nihilistic who have dropped the ball who because the master has taken time to come have beaten the servants of God and anticipate they're gonna go to heaven how much more reward when I have worked and been about my father's business for Christ in spite of reward in spite of recovery and in spite of answered prayer how much more will my reward be in heaven by positive reinforcement thanks to delayed gratitude if at all I have waited this long with nothing coming and God makes it clear that if at all you strive for him if you strive for him with no reward on earth great is your reward in heaven how much more ought I then hold fast? My reward is great for what in the world I'm going through. I get nothing to understand for what I do. I have had all support taken away from me. I get no donations, nothing. I am trudging through the street right now, basically sleepwalking. Do you understand? Still, however, trying to smash souls from the flames of hell. I will be shown this video one day in eternity from a vantage point where God is recording me with his eye, with a bird's eye view. The day when I was walking was sleepwalking, essentially. Trying to snatch even my enemies from the flames of hell. And when this video is being played, the feelings in my body right now of exhaustion, fatigue, uh, listlessness, uh, and how sallow my face is, bloodshot, my face having broken out into a whole bunch of acne because of stress and whatnot. This video will be recorded from a bird's eye view and as the Lord is replaying it from beginning to end, he will then show me what rewards throughout this entire conversation that I am having. I'm busy amassing for myself. It'll be a rewards ceremony. It'll be an awards ceremony where it is that now I'm no longer crying, but I am rejoicing over the reward that I am gaining for this very work. I'm not working for Mahala because I have built my house upon the rock. I am not working for Mahala because I have embraced the cornerstone which is the stone that the builders rejected. I am not working for Mahala because those who build in the Lord do not build in vain. I am working for Christ but Christ is all about delayed gratification and that's what I'm walking in. So no, I am not scared of you. However, I am frustrated and I'm exhausted by you and every so often I do flounder and feel like maybe this is gonna end my life until I realize that it can't possibly end me because we're not yet there. The devil has not yet been given authority to make war with us and to overcome us. It's not yet there. So if we have not yet arrived at that place, it means that I'm going to be the one to put you in the ground, not the other way around. But not first before getting a cast on my own leg, having a leg, uh, an arm amputated and me being basically catatonic, swaying on a chair, rocking in it with PTSD after war. I've won the war, but I'm, I'm traumatized. I am irrecoverably traumatized. I am traumatized by the evil of my country, the insistence of my suicide, how many times people keep on trying, I'm traumatized, but it doesn't matter because all this trauma is soon going to fly out the window because this is the end of the end of the end, meaning I don't have to live another 50 years, another 20 years, another 40 years, sad that people broke my heart. We don't have 50 years, we don't have 20 years, we don't have even 5 years, we do not have all that time left. So the thing that's going to cure my trauma is an incorruptible body that can feel no pain. It's an incorruptible body that can feel no pain. I'm going in the rapture. There's no way I'm not. This weird life that I live is evidence of the last days. I've been trudging through a hellish forest because it is the last days forest and people are insisting on killing me because they're demon possessed. So self-preserving human beings, mamelang. I'm self-preserving too. I'm like literally staggering about like a drunkard the way that gay kissing balance got Listen, okay? Nobody enters a cockpit and just puts their hands down our lingise. So I understand you've declared war on me and just in the same way that I'm not gonna stop fighting, I don't expect you to stop either. Nobody rocks up at a knife fight and does not pull a knife. Nobody rocks up at a sword fight and does not pull out a sword. Nobody rocks up at a gun fight and does not pull out a gun. Nobody pulls up at a fist fight and does not pull out a fist. I understand that you're going to pull out all your freaking damn crazy stops. 
to kill me because I am, after all, also determined to kill you. This is war. So, precisely because I expect you. Oh, I thought we didn't have many solar panels. It turns out that they exist on two sides of the roof. Okay, listen up. These spiritual wars that you've put me in, Logu Dawa Logu, that has made me sit, stand around Mostra Tengeka, my toenails that are not chopped, dear, that's a snack, see? Um, Let's fuck a Jose Hatting. I understand that Gosani Long Chapaka face happy. I know that tomorrow you're going to stab me on the side again. And I know that the next day you're going to try and put a noose around my neck again. I don't anticipate that you're going to stop with the suicide spells. Because after all, I am killing you. We're in a battlefield. We are in a cockpit. We are in a ring. But I'm Fandam. And you're Dombo. Have you seen Bloodsport? Mm. I'm Fandam and your Dombo a uh, uh, guy, please don't don't stop. You are going to your property. I'm Fandam and your Dombo. If you've seen Bloodspot from back in the day, you know how Dombo plays dirty. He be out here blinding the man with some sand and continuously just kicking him in the area of vulnerability. He's just playing dirty. Okay, like yeah, he's playing dirty and it, it appears as if the Ufandam is losing. It's Fandam, it's not Schwarzenegger. Yeah it, it, yeah, it looks like he's losing, but he wins. This is blood sport, and you are Tompo, and I'm Fandam. I'm gonna win even though you are playing freaking dirty. I'm also gonna win even though the, the game is not fair. There are 20,000 of you, and it's just me, Gilly One, okay? Libangata guys, and uh, you come at me garitare, but you see, it's written in God's word that when he was creating the earth, the spirit of the Lord hovered over the face of the deep. Before anything was created. Uh, by the spirit of God, the word who became flesh and dwelt among us then made the earth with the Rhema word. Basically, God created the universe, including you, everything, right? And it's written in God's word that God is spirit and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. Today I have to stand every so often because I am just staggering, okay? God is spirit and those who worship him worship him in spirit and in truth. So if God is spirit and everything that has been created is created by him, it means that every other spirit is substandard. And every other spirit is an extension of his spirit. God breathed into man and he became a living soul. I would imagine he also breathed into angels and they also became living souls. So, therefore, if at all, all of our spirits are extensions of the spirit of God. How dumb are you when you dabble with spirits that are trying to kill me? When I belong to the spirit that hovered over the face of the deep at the very beginning of the world. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. His name is Jesus, I serve him. And he is spirit and we worship him in spirit and in truth. And every other spirit you use draw, drew its soul and drew its energy from him. You are dabbling with Satan. You are dabbling with demons, Beelzebub, Diabolos. You are dabbling with entities that have got power, we get it. But I belong to the spirit that was hovering over the face of the deep that was there before anything else. So, blood sport, you are Dompo and I'm Fandam. Even though you play dirty and Elimangata, bottom line is it doesn't matter how many of you there are, I still belong to the one who was hovering over the face of the deep. The beginning, the be all and end all of all spirits is the one that was hovering over the face of the deep and I belong to him. So you being minions like Blubber in the movie Blubber with Robin Williams ultimately will culminate into one little Blubber having been created by your creator. You are ants on the floor to be trampled underfoot by a human being. You are cockroaches, do you understand? You are tiny. You are negligible and microscopic and myopic in your viewpoint of things. It doesn't matter how many of you come at me in one sitting like in the movie The Matrix Revolutions with all of those Agent Smiths coming against Neo. Bottom line is I'm the chosen one and I am the one here that is in Christ. I'm the one that belongs to the spirit that was hovering over the face of the deep and I'm the one who belongs to the spirit who breathed into all living creatures and they became living souls I belong to Jesus so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter how many of you there are do you see because you are all created from the same source you all come from God 
including the spirits you use to manipulate Christians and to manipulate the earth and to get jobs and to uh, be, be, bewitch and human sacrifice. Your spirits all come from the spirit that was hovering from the, on the face of the deep. So how many times you multiply is irrelevant. How many times you metastasize is irrelevant because you will never outgrow the spirit that hovered over the face of the deep. And that is why Elisha was told to open his eyes like mine are closed right now I'm sleepwalking on the street yeah because those who are with us are more numerous than those who are with them those who are with me are more numerous than those who are with you you've got the numbers here on earth Libangata. you hold hands together and you bewitch me in your concert Libangata, in your corporate you are gathered against the body of Christ but you are but mere mortals you are creations you are cockroaches you are ants you are microscopic living organisms that take your maker for granted you are all made of atoms the atom of which I have described before is the rudimentary shape that is the favorite one of God because it was described in the shape of the orphanim and yet being made up of atoms you still think that you can overwhelm the atom maker you think you can overwhelm the way maker, the promise keeper, the light in the darkness, that is who he is. He is God. You anticipate that you can overwhelm, do you understand, your maker, Libangata. But it doesn't matter, all 8 billion of you on this planet that is going to flee from the face of the one seated on the throne. <laughs> you could come at one Christian and you will still never win. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? No one can be against a single person that has believed upon the one true God because he is the source of all creation. So as many of you as there are across Africa and how prolific you may be, how exalted in the occult you may rank, it does not freaking matter, you cockroach, because you are just a creation. And all of the many of you and in so frazing me are touching God's anointed and because of that it's that basic you are not going to win the Lord has a thing about giving the illusion of prosperity to the wicked for no other purpose but to hand them over to a reprobate mind so seeing as you are so handed over sent a strong delusion to partake in your passions why are you priding yourself in my sorrow my sadness my bloodshot eyes and how much i'm staggering on the street because i'm struggling to ground myself with balance why are you priding yourself in so grand a travesty is that this is not going to end well Nangudra. And I've been saying it for a minute. You get to fight because you're self-preserving. You get to. Anybody that has Aja declared war is dumb when they just lingisa their hands when they get to a battlefield. Nobody ever expected Hamas to sit back and wait for Israel to raid Gaza and do nothing. Of course they fought. They threw bombs. They tried to come up with their own tactics. Nobody ever expected Hezbollah to sit back and do nothing after all of their leading chain was killed. Nobody's expecting Iran to sit back and stop throwing missiles. Nobody is expecting Yemenis, Houthi rebels from like continuing to massacre the Red Sea. Nobody is expecting any of that. Nobody is expecting even Vladimir Putin uh, to, to just stand back now that everybody's upset with him invading the Ukraine. And nobody's also expecting the Ukraine to, because they're so small in comparison to Russia and don't have as much might, to not fight. Nobody expects a person in a cockpit at war, in some kind of a wrestling match. Nobody expects any of the contestants they're in to not fight. I mean, we know what happened in the Olympics, right? How it is that, that some butch male rocked up inside the arena fighting women, claiming to be a man himself, claiming to be a woman himself. The woman in question that he was fighting started out fighting, but they then she stopped fighting because she realized this man was too strong for her and so refused to continue to I guess participate in this particular battle but she did not rock up that's what I'm getting at she did not get in there and told herself that because this is a man I'm not gonna fight she fought but she lost why because she was fighting a freaking man I'm trying to explain to you that I understand humanity you are self-preserving so because you're self-preserving that's a God-given gift you are never ever going to just sit back and do nothing when somebody declares war on you and I've declared war on you I've declared war I have said I'm gonna kill you 
which is get only bulaya go fella one by one you're gonna drop like dominoes little talk of fella some of y'all aren't gonna die but a whole talk of fella banana luna and then those of y'all that stay alive and repent hallelujah heaven will rejoice i gotta fight because you've declared war on me but like the idf this is a defensive strategy it's not offensive i kill a lot in jeffa like a dipunga lady panties alone and did it to a bit more starting in mahala because can i let it go no kill on a little coco i am a peacemaker i am a son of god i'm a daughter of god so i would much rather walk in diplomacy but at this point diplomacy has failed and so war is being declared only because you broke and burst like the menacing creep and cockroach that you are into my kibbutz and you put my baby in an oven and then make sure that my husband's gender cannot be identified but for dna you did that and so now i've declared war now you're gonna die and i'm gonna win a year later on the 7th of october 2025 I will rock up having not only neutralized the proverbial Hamas in my life but also the leading commanding chain of Hezbollah. There will be testimonies all over these streets of people who died because I declared war on them. They are going to die. Members of the occult are going to go in the grave and I'm going to kill them. Giliwan, as a couple of staggering Gilisaw, I am going to neutralize them. I'm going to live. I told you yesterday, I don't have to outlive or outrun Satan. I only have to outrun you. And so one year from today, a whole chunk of you are going to be dead but one year from today a whole chunk of you are going to rise up again and try to replace those that died but just like with Israel you will immediately get dropped to the ground it's going to happen you are going to remember this message those of you that do remain when you are busy attending the funerals of your sons and daughters because I told you that some of y'all are not going to die in your own capacity but your kids your favorite kids are going to get taken on because that's just what God is doing I told you that that is going to happen but you will have ignored me and in your anger you're gonna pursue me to the Red Sea in your irritation you're going to keep trying to kill me all the way up until just like with Israel you're gonna harass us until the rapture you're not gonna stop all of my dreams my hopes and my fantasies concerning children and a husband I am slowly but surely putting them to the ground I am burying them because I recognize okay, with the way things are how and how safety in this world. I am just basically hooking up preparations, sealing up the final touches of the world before the rapture. That's all I'm doing. I am an end times saint, saint in a feverish spiritual battle that is going to take time for me to finally get some kind of semblance of achievement. But in my feet to conquer you you are going to try to put me in the ground you are going to be strange you're going to make like donald trump's attempted assassins two three times over and perch yourself on some silly roof like a bird and try and put a bullet in my ear in my brain but then it'll only graze my ear that that's just going to keep happening until the rapture until the rapture so I'm here to just basically say Mazishe, Mazikale, Magu, Shube. Let it begin. It's already be it's in the center. But I just want to let you know that nobody was dropping my bombs into my camp doesn't mean nothing is on Allah. Nobody rocks up a lingi is a matzoho in a war. Since I've declared war, I'm not gonna lingi some matzoho. I'm not going to lingisa Matsoho, but at the same time, I also recognize that Nani, you're not going to lingisa them. I'm not so naive so as to imagine that my petitions for you to cease hostilities against my person are going to work. Some of you will repent. I don't deny that. But there will also be some of you who, because you're so reprobate as you are and you are inevitably going to go to hell, the darkness of, um, um, the, the, the blackness of darkness has been reserved for you forever. You are clouds without rain, whitewashed tombs, wandering stars. You are reprobate. You are not going to repent. There are people that cannot repent. They've blasphemed the Holy Spirit. It's over. Like they will never do what is right. They can do nothing but go to hell. The guy in America is like that. He's reprobate. He can never recover to God. And so people like those, because of their inability to recover back to God, will just inevitably just keep shooting at me. But like Nasrallah, one day they'll wake up in torments and be like, snap, shouldn't have done that. But it's already going to be too late. I don't expect you, being as self-preserving as you are humanity, to not try to kill me before I kill you. So what I'm trying to explain right now is that 
do not imagine that I'm going to be discouraged by the fact that you keep on throwing weapons in my backyard. The fact that you have sent me a barrage of missiles over my Iron Dome that get intercepted because you're Iran. Because you're so desperate that you are no longer using proxies, okay? You are a actively participating in the mutiny against me personally. All of these occult practitioners that, are, practitioners that are very high level, that are very high ranking, have taken weapons up themselves against me because their minions are not achieving anything i've decimated their proxies and now like iran they're coming for me personally i don't expect you to stop i don't expect you to stop but the more i am targeted by the head of a snake of the snake instead of the little tails the more your organizations get dismantled dismantled your occult organizations get dismantled from the top down all along i've been dealing with your minions your proxies and they've been failing abysmally where I'm concerned. So you're coming personally. It's ideal, Ayatollah Khamenei, that you come personally, because that's when you get bombed. It's ideal, Nasrallah, that you should come personally, because that's when you get bombed. It is when you stop sending proxies that the war is reaching its finality. When high priests and priestesses, leaders of occult organizations, literally satanic organization head honchos that are running all of Africa, when they come for individual unique saints in their own personal capacity, that's when the war is over. And that's when God is going to light them out all in one big fat sitting. And that's what you all are presently doing. I do not expect you, do you understand what I'm saying, to stop with the barrage of missiles, given that you are sending me your head of snakes, you are sending me your heads, you are no longer up, you are still sending me stuff as minions, but your bosses are now involved, okay? Your bosses are now involved, and because your bosses are now involved, more so am I going to be fatigued, more so am I going to be drained, more so am I going to be ransacked, more so am I going to be afflicted and harassed, more so, but that also means that more so am I at the end. We are done here. I don't expect you to not barrage me. I do expect it, but understand that even with the barrage, I'm still going to win. And all that's going to happen with me is a bit of a case of hospitalization. Maybe I might even be in a coma for a few months, but you are going to go in the ground. Are we clear? Now that we've put that out there, bring it, okay? I know you will bring it. Tomorrow I will be more exhausted than this. I will be more drained than this. I will be more afflicted than this. I will be in a deeper spiritual war than this. But tomorrow you will also be closer to the grave than you ever have been. That's all I gotta say. This is war. A self-preserving human race will always fight. But the losers are losers are losers. You are losing. And I don't expect you to not fight me, Dompo. But comprehend that I'm Fandam. And you're gonna lose even though you play dirty. Okay? Now that we've put that out the way, it's time for me to sign out. I hope not to record tomorrow, but we'll see what happens. I'm signing out in Christ's name, Crank K. Peace.